Hi guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. I hope that you're having a lovely week so far, despite the pretty shitty news that came out that Tim Canova lost, Alan Grayson lost in those races that we covered. Still check out those videos. It's really great to hear actual progressives talking and actual progressives on the ballot, despite the fact that they lost. But we're coming for you. They'll be on the ballot, I'm sure, again in 2018. So just stay involved. Keep it up. We can't have these Democratic establishment hacks like Nancy Pelosi, who I'm about to talk about, conti continue to run our country. They aren't in touch with the grassroots of, uh, of the country, of the, the, the base of the American people, um, as is so obvious in these recent Guccifer 2.0 leaks. If you guys recall, Guccifer 2.0 was the apparently Russian hacker. That's what the Democratic establishment is saying because obviously Hillary Clinton is so feared by the Russian government that she has to be the uh, taken down by Russian hackers. It's dumb. I don't really know if it's true. It doesn't really matter if it's true because Guccifer 2.0 has provided us with a variety of juicy information about the democratic establishment, one that we wouldn't get through the mainstream media and one that the mainstream media isn't reporting on, but we will be reporting on it, of course. So these particular emails came from Nancy Pelosi's personal PC computer, and a lot of them had to deal with the DCCC, horrible acronym, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. So a lot of what they do is fundraise hundreds of thousands of dollars and up to 1.5 million in this year that Nancy Pelosi herself raised. Obviously, Nancy Pelosi is a big person in the Democratic Party. She is the minority leader. She used to be Speaker of the House. She is very cozy with the Democratic establishment figures. She actually went down to campaign for Debbie Wasserman Schultz, our favorite person here at TYT Politics, um, and is friendly, of course, with the Hillary Clinton campaign. And so these emails did prove to be interesting. So, but for once, the fundraising emails are least the least interesting part of these leaks because you can find all this stuff on Open Secrets, um, which is a great website. I, I encourage you guys to check it out. But there was a particular email that dealt with Black Lives Matter, which actually was very fascinating and showed how out of touch the Democrats really are with the base of their party, which is incredibly supportive of Black Lives Matter. The progressive wing of the party, of course, is, is per supportive of Black Lives Matter. So this particular email was authored by Troy Perry. He used to work for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Uh, now he works for Hillary Clinton. So one, there's two things you can take from that. One, uh, there's a massive revolving door between the Democratic uh, Congressional Campaign Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. She is the Democratic establishment epitomized. And this guy did go to work for Hillary Clinton, um, despite the fact that she has a large African-American base. And he seems to be very out of touch with what Black Lives Matter is actually about. So I'm going to read to you guys this, this email. This was from November 19th, 2015, entitled Black Lives Matter Movement, Internal Use Only. So obviously, they didn't want this to get out. Um, they say in bold multiple times that they don't want this to get out. So I'll just read pretty much verbatim the email. Presidential candidates have struggled to respond to tactics of the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, that's kind of an understatement. <laughs> the tactics, first of all. It sounds so nefarious. Um, but anyway, while there has been little engagement with House candidates, candidates and campaign staff should be prepared. Then in bold and italics, this document should not be emailed or handed to anyone outside the building. Please only give campaign staff these best practices in meetings or over the phone. In bold. Too bad for them. This was leaked by Goose for 2.0, so that's kind of down the uh, down the drain or out the window. Uh, but but there is a reason in, reason why they didn't want this to get out because it shows really how out of touch they are. I will continue. Background: What does Black Lives Matter want? <laughs> kind of self-explanatory in the title. They want their lives to matter. But I digress. Radical movement, they call it to end anti-black racism, in quotes. How do you, why do you need this to be spelled out for you? It's in the title, Black Lives Matter. Also, they call it radical, as if the idea of wanting black lives to matter in the eyes of the government is radical. And apparently, the Democratic Party is supposed to be the champion for black people in this country, yet they're calling the movement that just wants the very existence of black people to be recognized by the state and their right to life, uh, and for them not to get shot by police officers at an exorbitant high rate, 
they, they think that's radical. So apparently that's what the De De Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee believes, and they needed a memo sent out throughout the Democratic establishment to tell them that particular obvious fact, a fact that's obvious to anybody who's actually progressive. And that's the point. The Democrats aren't progressive. So I can, I'll continue. Criminal justice system reform, sentencing reform, ending pris the prison industrial complex, police reform, referring to hiring, training, and unfair policing tactics. An end to police brutality, the killings of unarmed African Americans. Yep, <laughs> Black Lives Matter, remember, that's what the title is. The uh, impetus of the movement being the acquittal of George Zimmerman, sure. Collect data on police shootings, demilitarization of police. And then they refer to the tactics that they need to deal with Black Lives Matter because th you're not actually representing them. That just means that you're dealing with them. If approached by Black Lives Matter activists, campaign staff should offer to meet with local activists. Invited Black Lives Matter attendees should be limited. Please aim for personal or small group meetings, meaning we'll appease them, but we don't want it to get out that we're directly appeasing them or we don't want to do anything that would actually end the suffering of black people at the hands of police. They just want to keep it on the down low, make sure that you quell their fe fears and make sure that you pretend like you're listening to them, but make sure it's behind closed doors and in small meetings so they don't cause a ruckus and put it on the internet or something like that. Oy. And that's actually, if you recall, what Hillary Clinton did. Bernie Sanders, when was he was stormed by a Black Lives Matter activist on the stage, kind of let her have the podium for a little bit and didn't really pay it any mind, didn't listen to this kind of memo. But Hillary Clinton had a closed door fundraiser where a Black Lives Matter protester paid to get in, much like Jordan and I did last week with Debbie Wasserman Schultz's event, um, but we didn't do any protests. That's this Black Lives Matter uh, activist did and was quickly kicked out by Hillary Clinton's people. So it seems like their belief uh, system is very consistent with this particular memo. Uh, and this staffer who wrote this memo now works for the Hillary Clinton campaign. Go figure. So the bullet, bullet points that they say you have to use to deal with Black Lives Matter activists is listen to their concerns. Don't offer support for concrete policy positions. So. Obviously, it's frustrating because, of course, black Americans don't want to go to the Republican Party. They're obviously worse. We're not saying that the Democrats are better. The Democrats are at least listening to them or pretending to listen to them. But because they're so concerned primarily with raising money and with promoting particular policies and just getting elected, they take for granted that the, the fact that they have such an overwhelming amount of support for, from black people and from black voters. So they don't really say, we're going to do anything to help you. They basically just say, let's appease them. Let's put them in a closed room. We won't give them any policy objectives to actually help this particular situation. We'll just brief you on their objective, which seems obvious. And then we will let them go quietly. Um, they just don't want bad optics. That was the purpose of this memo. Listen to their concerns, quell them, make sure that they're happy in this particular moment, but don't give them any concrete policy because we already have the black vote locked up. We don't really need to worry about them right now.